Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the area around mile marker 68 along the Denali Highway and the hunting territory around the Alpine Creek Lodge in Alaska. The highway was constructed to connect the town of Paxson and Cantwell and runs through well-preserved tundra and primitive territory. Denali National Park is about 60 miles to the west as the crow flies, and other than that, there isn't much of anything but wilderness around. The Nelchina Public Use Area is about 25 miles to the southeast of our location in the Clearwater Mountains in the Hayes Range. The climate here is classified as a subarctic climate, which means the winters are long, cold, and snowy, and summers are mild. According to UCLA's research, boreal forests and tundra dominate alongside an abundance of berry bushes. The usual Alaska cast of animals are found here, including moose and caribou, with the occasional dull sheep hiding amongst the crags. Predators include wolves, lynx, black bears, and brown bears. On April 15, 2016, father and son Brett and Glenn Bond were ripping along on their snowmobiles up a hill in hopes of catching a giant brown bear as it emerged from its winter den. Brett was a 35-year-old hunting guide and resided in Wasilla, a few hours to the south. Glenn was an active 77-year-old retiree from education and guiding and enjoyed anything outdoors, especially with his son. Spring bear hunting tends to be controversial to people who don't understand bear management. It can be viewed as unfair to the bears, given they are just waking from hibernation and may not be aware of what awaits them outside the confines of their dens. It is certainly not without its dangers, as surprising a hungry brown bear isn't the safest of pursuits. The men had decided to take snowmobiles to aid in getting back to bear denning locations. The basic strategy was to glass snowbanks for tracks or den openings and wait for the bears inside to emerge. The weather was cooperating for the most part as the skies were clear and temperatures were manageable. Brett knew that his father wouldn't be able to go on many more hunting trips and memories of prior hunting trips flashed through his mind as the men buzzed up the slopes. Brett took his first caribou when he was only seven years old with his dad right beside him the entire trip. This hunting trip would mean much more to both of the men than what they expected. The Bonds were both very experienced woodsmen and trained in wilderness and emergency medicine. Brett had completed a medical program called Learn to Return, which relayed wilderness medical strategies. They had had a handful of tangles with various bears throughout the decades, but had always managed to avoid an attack somehow. It wasn't long before Brett spotted an opening in the snow about 24 miles into their ride. He could see bear tracks around the opening, but none leading away from it. This typically means the bear's awake from its slumber, but isn't quite adjusted to the bright and stimulating surroundings outside of its den enough to venture out permanently. Parking their machines a short distance away, the men slowly approached the den opening and observed the evidence around it to confirm their suspicions. After several minutes of analysis, Brett announced he had followed each of the bear's paths around the opening and it hadn't left the snowbank, opting to return to its den. Now the men knew they would need to find a place that gave them a good view of the area surrounding the den opening. They sneaked up to within 36 yards of the den entrance and set Glenn up with his gun, loaded and ready. Brett decided to sneak around to a vantage point above the den to view the tracks the bear had left. He managed to get within 10 yards of the opening and started looking at the tracks the bear had left before returning to the den for more rest. Brett's observations were interrupted by his father yelling, He's coming out, Brett! At first, Glenn was concerned that the bear may be headed toward his son. He fired around from his rifle, hoping to drop the bear before it could pose a threat to his son. Upon hearing Glenn's cries to Brett, the bear made it certain just which one of the men had drawn its full attention. As the bear approached him, Glenn managed to get to his knees from his prone shooting position. Brett watched as the enormous bear covered ground toward his father so quickly that its speed seemed surreal. In a matter of only a few seconds, the bear closed the 120 feet between Glenn and itself and slammed him to the ground in freight-trained fashion. Brett saw the bear grab his crumpled father by the back portion of his neck and didn't miss a step in dragging him down the slope. His father's form took on a mannequin-esque quality as it limply bounced and jerked across the snow. As soon as Brett saw his father being dragged away from him, he began to sprint toward them. 
with his 375 hunting rifle in one hand and his 454 Cassol pistol in the other. He was hoping he had brought enough firepower to bring the bear down before it killed one or both of the men. Brett could hear his father screaming in terror and pain as he approached. He used those cries to help him hone in on their location. As Brett got within range of his father and the bear, he raised his pistol straight out in front of him. He could see the bear shaking its head as it bit onto his father's face and let out a yell to draw its attention. As soon as it saw Brett running toward it, the bear began to run toward him as well. It was clear the bear had accepted Brett's challenge to mutual combat and intended to maim or kill him. As Glenn lay in a blurred smear of red in the background, the battle scene now focused on Brett and the bear as they converged on each other. Brett focused on the form of the bear as it bounded toward him, growing in scale with each leap. Brett squeezed the trigger on his pistol, and the 360-grain buffalo boar slug slammed into the bear's neck. The impact of the pistol round caused the bear to pull up. Its hesitance allowed Brett to circle around it and position himself between the bear and his father. He took careful aim and squeezed the trigger once more and struck the bear square in the chest. Now having the bear isolated and the concern of striking his father with a bullet out of his mind, Brett knew the distance between the two men and the bear was dangerously close. He knew his next shot had to bring an end to the attack. He focused his pistol sights on the bear's head and hoped its report would deliver the collapsed bear. But it didn't drop the bear, even though his shot hit right where he'd aimed. Instead of crumpling, the massive bear stood to its hind legs and towered over Brett. Taking careful aim again, Brett squeezed the pistol's trigger and struck the bear in the neck once more, causing it to tumble backward and down the slope. As it rolled, Brett continued to fire until his pistol was empty. Brett watched the bear tumble down the mountainside. It didn't show any signs of life once it stopped rolling a few hundred yards away. Then his mind turned back to his father. Glenn lay lifeless and still, surrounded by a growing pool of blood. Brett knew his father's condition was life-threatening, if his wounds hadn't already claimed his life. He approached his dad and hoped to hear an utterance of some kind come from his lips as his dying words. After a few minutes, Glenn sat up and began talking to his son in a relatively normal fashion. His face was horrific and mutilated by the jaws of the bear in only a few seconds, but he seemed to have all of his faculties about him. The pictures of the dead bear with its bullet wounds, as well as Glenn's tattered face, would not pass muster with YouTube guidelines, so I have posted them on my Patreon account below. I must warn you before you view them that they are the worst pictures of any bear attack victim I've ever seen, and if you're the kind of person that is bothered by images like this, do not look at them. They're very difficult to get out of your mind. Brett wanted to assess his father's injuries, as he was trained to do in his wilderness first aid classes. Aside from the bloody and distorted mess from which he could hear his father's words coming from, Glenn didn't seem to have any other major injuries. Brett was very worried, though, at the amount of blood his father had lost. He used a handkerchief to push his father's face back together as best he could and fastened it around Glenn's head to hold it all tight. As soon as he had tied the knot on the handkerchief, he could hear his father choking on his own blood and flesh as it was forced toward his windpipe. Brett realized he would have to leave his father's wounds open as they retreated down the mountain in search of medical attention. That is when Glenn started directing his son to aid in his own rescue. Part of his directions were instructing Brett to take photos of his injuries, as well as the dead bear. Brett brought the snowmobile around and helped his father onto the rear portion of the seat. Brett fought the urge to haphazardly race across the snow, knowing that each jostle and bump inflicted pain and discomfort to his dad. They made the 24-mile return trip and reached the Denali Highway in about 90 minutes. They had arrived at the Alpine Creek Lodge from which they were hunting and called Alaska State Troopers to rally medical help from there. A medical helicopter piloted by Brett Westcott from Life Med Alaska Helicopter Service picked Glenn up at the lodge and flew him to the hospital. During the flight to the hospital, Glenn was recorded instructing flight crew members to keep a cool head and not panic. His voice was notably clear in the recordings I listened to. He noted that his appearance must be pretty bad, judging by the reaction of the crew. As the helicopter flew toward Anchorage, Glenn objected and ordered them to the hospital at Matanuska. They agreed and redirected their flight path accordingly. Incredibly, Glenn's face was repaired in a single surgery, and he was released from the hospital only nine days after his admittance. He reportedly received no blood transfusions to replace the tremendous amount of blood he'd lost as a result of the bear attack. 
in an additional indicator of Glenn's toughness. He reportedly received no anesthetic or pain medications during the operation to reconstruct his face. He later had his hearing and vision repaired by surgeons in Idaho. The surgeons there indicated that Glenn refused pain pills and never returned for the follow-up visits after his operations. Incredibly, Glenn made a rapid recovery from the attack, though he lost an eye, due to a significant portion of that side of his face being crushed by the bear's jaws. His injured wrist was also casted until it healed. In an investigation of the attack afterward, authorities measured Brett's strides as he attempted to catch up to his father as the bear dragged him off. They indicated that his strides were the same length as Olympic sprinters, indicating his effort was above and beyond what he could have otherwise performed. They also measured the distance between the bear's claw marks in the snow and Brett's boot tracks when he fired the fatal shots toppling the bear. Those shots were fired at a distance of only five and a half feet in separation between Brett and the bear. Brett relayed a lot of information about what led him to fit himself out with the pistol he chose. After comparing reports and thoughts on the topic, it's clear that pistols of at least forty caliber demonstrated the highest degree of effectiveness in killing an attacking bear. The most important factor in the stopping power of the pistol pertains to the bullets it sends down range. Loading it with hardened rounds is key, and there is research indicating that a semi-automatic pistol allows a person to send lead a full second faster in reaction time than a revolver, and holds more bullets in its magazine than most revolvers do in their cylinders. Additional research listed a firearm as 97% effective in stopping a bear attack, and bear spray being 90-93% to effective on brown bears. As a side note, bear spray is reportedly 100% successful in stopping a polar bear attack. One noted difference is that bears who are sprayed have a high rate of returning in a follow-up attack after being sprayed initially. The use of a firearm tended to eliminate that potential. Additional numbers indicate that a person properly dispensing bear spray had a 0% rate of death during the altercation, with only 2% receiving minor injuries. By contrast, a person utilizing a firearm in their own defense fared worse, with only a 76% success rate due to the requirement of fatally striking a charging bear as it covers uneven or sloped ground. All research indicates that carrying bear spray and a powerful firearm increase a bear attack survivor's odds of avoiding injury or death. As for the carcass of the bear that attacked Glenn, Brett went back to the attack site the following Saturday and reclaimed it in compliance with Alaska state game laws. The bear's pelt measured nine foot square, which means from paw to paw and nose to the tip of his tail, was at least nine feet in each direction. That is a very large brown bear. Brett returned to guiding bear hunts very soon after his father's attack occurred. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. Do you feel comfortable enough in your shooting skills to only carry a firearm in bear country? Given precision is key, is a firearm preferred by you over bear spray when it comes to preventing or stopping a bear attack? Who is tougher in your mind, Glenn Bond or Jeremy Evans? I'll be glad to read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness and is fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.